Well, hi everyone, uh, I'm going to have to go relatively quickly. Um, this is a talk that's pretty high level. Um, we're not going to go into any code, Jane's going to do that uh, after me. So it's more uh, really sort of a high level um, talk about how to think about the design and architecture and why Ash might help you and how to reason about if you're trying it out, what it can do for you. So we're doing stuff at Alembic with Ash. Hit us up if you need to do an Elixir project. Um, yeah, really, I think the, the big thing I want to tackle in this talk is what is an application. You've probably heard the term Phoenix is not your application. We're going to explore what that means. Uh, so we'll get to that in a minute. But let's talk about the history of you know, web application architecture. So in the beginning, da, 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 there was the one tier architecture. Kind of very simple. There was some HTML. There was some SQL getting some data from from a database. Uh, largely, we were programming in PHP or Perl or probably Python or whatever was cool at the time. Um, I was still at uni when we were doing this kind of stuff. Um, but basically, it ended up being yeah SQL in HTML fetching data, and it didn't work out that well. There wasn't a lot of abstractions. Everything's mushed together. Um, you've probably heard of client server. That was the other thing. We sort of separated things out into client part and server part, kind of the clients, the UI, the servers, the, the back end part. Really, what we landed on was a sort of a standardized three tier architecture. And I, I think it's worth sort of pointing this stuff out because it's not entirely clear that everyone fully grokes why we have these layers. Uh, and it's so. Sorry? So, yeah, we've got your, your presentational layer, which is the top layer. So we've got web UIs, we've got mobile apps, we've got you know, terminal applications. Uh, at the bottom, we've got our data store where we're fetching stuff. And the important red part in the middle is our all important application layer. And really that's in the middle for a reason. It's the core of what you're trying to do. Um, when you're building applications, your logic should live in that place. Um, and I think really, you know, the, way, the best way to, to describe how to build your applications is that you should be able to take away the presentational layer, the web UI or the mobile app, and all of the logic should be still in your application layer. Otherwise you duplicate it across every, every single client. Um, and look, I grew up in, in the 90s with Larry Ellison who ran Oracle was trying to get you to stick to Oracle databases and he'd charge, he'd charge you loads of money for you know, every single CPU that was, was running um, for your data stores. And so you know, I grew up writing Java um, and being very conscious of not being locked into you know, Larry's database. And so really the persistence layer is important to insulate your application from how you store the data. So it's really about layers, it's about insulating what your important part is, the application layer from how you present it to users, because that could change, and how you store it on disk, because that could also change. Um, there's the idea of an interior architecture because there's other layers that can be sort of added in here, but really, you know, it's, it's questionable what the other layers really are and where they belong. So like an API layer, is that really its own thing? It's kind of and a part of your application and how it represents itself to the user, but it's also potentially you could look at it as part of a kind of UI as well, a presentational UI to external clients. Um, so just be aware of those terms if you haven't already. I think, yeah, what I want to be clear about is the difference between an application and an application layer. I think when we said Phoenix isn't your application, what we really meant was it's not your application layer. Because it kind of, when you do a, you know, a default Phoenix app, it ends up being your application. And so I think that's kind of confusing. So the box around the outside is kind of like how you set up a normal Phoenix application. Uh, but there's also the application layer in the middle. So that's important. So what Ash is trying to do is be kind of the, the middle layer. Um, and I think the point here is down the bottom, Phoenix, when you create a new web app, it's Phoenix new 
really all its opinions about how to build your application is have a context folder, debatable what that means, but it's a way of organizing you know, your, your services or modules that have functions that basically call it to. And so there's a lot of wiggle room for how to build applications within those fairly loose parameters. So yeah, I think I said it before, but it's worth repeating, Phoenix is not your application, but it's really, it's not your whole application layer. So I think what I see is Phoenix, the bit that Phoenix owns is what we've drawn the box around, which is the web part. So really we're putting uh, often for convenience, our applications inside the web application. Um, and that's just convenient, um, but it's worth visualizing it like this so that you know that really what you should be doing, it's not quite as convenient, but it's a, a better structure for separation of concerns. So your application layer should be often a separate application completely and separable from the, the web part. But it's, look, it's convenient, it's how Rails did it, to put it all together into one app. Knowing that that folder, the application folder that isn't the web folder, is where all your logic sits, where your, all of your interesting bits are happening, and then you can separate it out. Now, the point is that Ash is intended to have stronger opinions than just stick some functions in some modules and call Ecto around that stuff. This is a different way to look at the application architecture from a sort of circular point, and I think the point that your application is in the middle, the bit that's important, and the other pieces around the outside are effectively interfaces to that. So, why Ash? What I've wanted my entire software career, and what I think software developers want, you know, intrinsically, is composability of their applications. We want to build our applications out of Lego bricks, effectively. Um, and you know, we sort of do that, but this is a higher level of abstraction. We don't want to really build our own bricks. Like we don't have our own dependencies. Um, you know, we don't. We want to use what's given to us, uh, and we want to compose it together in a pretty neat way. So Ash is a way to to effectively do that, and we'll see that in James' talk. You know, exactly how that happens in code. But yeah, we don't want to reinvent our own bricks to build applications. So this iceberg metaphor is kind of really what we want to build is the bit above the waterline. What we don't really want to build, but we sometimes have to, is all of the stuff below the waterline. Um, things above the waterline are effectively the innovative, novel, differentiated stuff, the high value bits. And the rest are commodity stuff that's table stakes that largely has already been done many times before and it's low value to, to our customers. Um, you can look at it as core stuff that we work on and effectively it's a waste. And this is a sort of non-exhaustive list of all the things that I wish already existed in any web application when I started from scratch. So you know, it's a long list. Um, authentication, you'll notice at the top, but you know, we want our apps to be secure, we want to effectively store data safely, we want to observe it, debug it, um, you know, track users using it, um, all that kind of stuff. We want to administrate it, make sure the right people do the right things, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, sort of questionable exactly what the proportion of above the waterline important stuff. Um, is compared to you know what you don't really want to have to build again for every application because they all kind of look the same. I mean, any thoughts on you know exactly what proportion of core stuff that you're building in any new application versus things that would exist in, and you'd expect to see in every application? I'll put some numbers there and discuss it later. Um, so. Getting to the Ash part, how does Ash help build better Elixir applications? Really what we're doing is having better opinions around that core application layer. So if you haven't looked at Ash yet, it's worth keeping this in mind. Ash is trying to give you, you know, a DSL, a declarative way of describing your application that is then introspectable so you can effectively generate other parts of your application 
So that's where it gets confusing. Um, it's trying to, you start at the red part and you've got helpers and extensions to help you derive things from your application model. Um, so effectively, if you can think of ecto schemas, modeling your domain, um, describing what your users can do to your system, that's kind of what we'll see later. Um, and then from that, you've got effectively a data structure you can introspect and generate things like admin UIs, GraphQL APIs, JSON APIs. You can effectively generate Phoenix form helpers that can help you generate forms for getting the, that data in to your system and displaying it out again. Uh, we can also swap data layers. Also important. So we can use Postgres, which is a pretty standard approach, but we've got lots of other ways to connect to data. Um, this is probably not the best visualization, but what it is trying to do is sort of visualize some of the core Ash concepts. Um, Ash is resource oriented, so the resources in the blue layer in the middle are effectively the nouns of your system, and in those resources you describe the attributes, you describe the actions, um, and what you can do to that resource, and then you can write either modules or functions, write your own sort of ecto type, ecto style fetching, or you can get Ash to generate through the code interface the code that you would otherwise write. So you end up not having to write any code to get an Elixir-based service interface to your application. Also, like I said, you can swap data layers and you can have data layers effectively code the resource. Yep. Swappable data layers is a pretty interesting effect of this because we're working and modeling at a layer above Ecto. So when we use Ash Postgres, we use Ecto, uh, but we don't have to. And so we can get some benefits from Ash working above the data layer and generating things like migrations and so forth. Um, so wrapping up, why are we so excited about this idea? Um, there's lots of reasons this isn't exhaustive, but I think one important one is the standardization and consistency across all of our apps. We, as an agency, work across many applications. There's a lot of commonality between those applications and we want to standardize and be able to swap people between our applications that we're building. We want to spend our valuable developer time on the important parts, the novel business problems that our clients are paying us for. Um, we want composability, we don't want to reinvent the Lego bricks. And so, you know, we want to solve commodity problems like authentication, which is change the tree, one time, and then use that as a dependency. And so Ash effectively lets us, you know, declare our application in an interesting way. Um, once we do that, we get a lot of benefits. And you'll you know, see some of those shortly. So higher return on investment, a lower cost, total cost of ownership is effectively what we're aiming at. And we want to just deliver more value soon. It is really where we're at. These are some of the, the apps that we're building with them. They're complicated. This is a primary school scheduling, app, scheduling application. Um, effectively, it's a Google Calendar inside a pivot table with a Trello board thing where you drag in um, effectively stuff you have to allocate from the list on the left over onto the, the school timetable. Uh, this is another application called Excellent Work Design, basically a the Toyota production system application where we're designing work for heavy assets. So big mining truck servicing, basically it's a hierarchical way of describing uh, exactly how the work is done when you do complex work on heavy assets. And so big truck servicing, we're describing, pick up the tool to go walk around the truck and do all of these kinds of things and capturing all of that knowledge about how that work gets done the most effective way uh, is another one of the apps that we've built. And yeah, any questions? Uh, if you want to look up more about Ash and you haven't seen it, check out Ash HQ. The link should be there. And hit me up if you've got any questions. All right. Um, so the question is not really about that, but it's just 
Your question is not really exactly about that, but also it is. Uh, I mean, like uh, for example, if you have already have the access planning, how difficult or it is to migrate to Elixir and uh, potentially delete something else? Like any app? Uh, yeah, but any app, but app, I guess. Um, I don't know how to answer that. I mean, I think it's as easy to migrate existing applications as, as it is to build a new one and possibly easier because if you've already uh, designed your application, you know what the data looks like, you've kind of done a lot of the work. So porting that to Ash should be pretty straightforward as long as you're not changing anything or evolving it as you do. So if you've got an existing database schema, it should be pretty straightforward. Um, because you're not having to do a lot of the, the normal work that takes the time is designing and thinking about what you need to build. So, um, you know, we haven't done that in, you know, sort of practical scenarios, but I think theoretically that should be a lot easier to do legacy migrations to a new platform. So that's another question. Yeah, I think my question was similar. We have experience with Taking an existing Phoenix application, Phoenix application, integrate with Ash. So, not yet. So, I, I think certainly we're going to be doing that kind of thing at some point in the future, sooner rather than later, um, because we're not always building new applications. But yeah, the, the, the same thing applies. Uh, yeah, if you've already designed your data schemas, you already know what your app does. You're taking away, that's most of the work. So it becomes a, a fairly straightforward migration as long as you're not changing anything to effectively rebuild an app over an existing design. So we haven't done it, but I mean, Ash should technically be able to do slice by slice. And you know, I think it's debatable as to on any project, it's going to be different about what you change. Is you're going to have learned something building the first version of the app. Do you start again? Do you migrate? You know, the evergreen question, I think, is how much do you rewrite? Um, you know, typically, the most businesses don't want to effectively stop the world, spend a lot of money on building you know, version two without getting any new features out the door. So typically, you're going to have to evolve any significant application you know, in slices. And there's, there's no reason Ash can't, can't do that. Thanks. Seems very promising. Yeah.